Hi, I'm Kelly with Bradley Kelly, and our mission is to help you share your story, your testimony with everyone you meet, and to share his story to the ends of the earth. Christ gave us parables to share, and we have our story, our testimony, that we are not meant to keep to ourselves. We are meant to be the light in a dark world and to show hope and encourage others. We hope that you enjoy these testimonies that we are highlighting on this channel and this platform, and we invite you to join us in sharing yours make a comment or reach out to us. We would love to show you. Enjoy these next few testimonies and have a blessed day. Hi, I am so excited today. I have the opportunity to get to know more Victory and she is joining us from outside of Fort Worth and she has an amazing testimony. Really, when I read your testimony, Victory, my jaw dropped. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, um, you know, we both have busy schedules. And so I was excited to, um, you know, reconnect with you. So thank you so much for joining us today. So let's just go ahead and dive in. And I want to hear, um, you know, I think that people get super encouraged by hearing the trial and then how you've overcome it and just seeing the blessings and the joy and giving people hope and encouragement. And so, um, let's just go ahead and get started and just kind of talk about like real quick, like how you grew up and, um, what led you to where you are today. Well, sure. Well, thank you so much for having me, fellow Texan. We get to, you know, yeah. get chat. <laughs> so yeah, I grew up right on the outskirts of Dallas in South Dallas in a town called Duncanville. Um, went to Duncanville High School and I was a high hat. So, you know, I was in the drill team and doing all that fun stuff. So yeah. Um, but, you know, after I, I left, I grew up a Christian. Um, mm -hmm. I was raised in the church. Um, I will tell you that, um, you know, there was probably rarely a day that we weren't in the church, you know, if the, if the doors were open kind of thing. Um, but then, you know, as we grow a little older and, you know, we're children leaving the nest, so to speak, um, it, you know, we, we come into a space of finding the Lord for ourselves. Right. And most definitely I, I had that, that experience, you know, that, that leaving behind your parents' faith and it becoming your own faith, which is right. a beautiful moment. Um, but after high school, I headed out to SMU and, you know, I had big plans to do business and that kind of stuff there. Um, didn't really, you know, wasn't really committed to it. If we're being honest, um, I got a little more committed to the party lifestyle. You know, I yeah. uh, met the man that was going to be my husband and we spent a lot of time together. And, um, my focus was just not, you know, not too much on school, um, ended up working full time and, you know, just kind of go in a different route. Um, we got yeah. married when I was 21 wow. and, um, yeah, I remember, I remember how much I loved wedding and event planning and um, just kind of fell in love with that. When we left the wedding, I got in the limo and I was in tears and he's like, what is going on with you? I'm like, well, you know, my wedding planning days are over and I'm just so sad, you know. <laughs> um, but we went to Disney World on our honeymoon and yeah. I got to experience foods and beverages and things of that nature that were insanely beautiful and magnificent. Mm. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with like the food industry and that combined with my event planning, you know, dreams. Yeah. I ended up going to culinary school, like the minute we got back from our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so funny. I worked for one. So we'll have to talk about that later. That's oh, so okay. neat. So were you in culinary or baking and pastry or what was your, your well niche? I started out with the full you know the full meal deal however the school I was going to shut down so all, all of the little attendees moved over to another school in downtown Dallas um, yeah. it was called El Centro which was a community college but they had an amazing baking and pastry program yeah. so I, I switched over to that yeah and I was a pastry chef for 19 years no um, way yeah, yeah, we travel Seriously, because <laughs> baking, baking and pastry people they love to be creative but they like structure and they like recipes but then they like to think outside the box mm -hmm. yeah so either I love baking and pastry or cooking it's really hard to, to do both exactly. yes and it takes a little bit it's very hard sometimes for a pastry chef to just kind of throw an ingredient in yeah you can throw <laughs> it on top <laughs> <Right>. exactly <laughs> 
So yes, yep, that was totally me. Um, so I had a kind of split career of doing the event planning and weddings and then the pastries and wedding cakes and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. I owned multiple bakeries and a restaurant. Oh my and goodness. So yeah. Yeah. So I guess kind of my story, um, it's, it, it's interesting. Um, it kind of goes like this, um, about 12 years ago, I, when I owned that restaurant, I had a PR person. And, um, well, I had the restaurant and bakeries, um, I had a PR person and she was having me go to different morning TV spots, uh, Fox and, you know, for good day. And, um, you know, just, I mean, all of them, CBS, NBC and, um, WB, like, I mean, I was all over the place and I kept getting invited back. Yeah. And she's like, you know, they love you. Like, it's like, you're a natural. It's so easy. You make it so easy for the host and everybody. Yeah, and I so agree. I asked, <laughs> so I asked her, you know, what if I had a show one day and I could interview all kinds of artisans and it would be uplifting and it would, you know, honor the Lord and people could tune in, but also maybe hear a God story and that kind of thing. Um, but but, you know, everyone is welcome to tune in. And right. she's like, really? Oh, yeah, we could totally do that. So we started to kind of plan that. Yeah. And um, that's where the seed got planted about Ari Vive Studios, the, you know, my show now. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, about a year and a half later, we had, you know, we kind of been talking about it, planning it. But my marriage fell apart. I mean, the rug completely got pulled out from under me. And my husband left and I ended up being a single mom to two young boys. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was a devastating time. It was a really difficult time. And, you know, I'm not going to say I handled it perfectly. You know, I mean, I was definitely looking for ways, um, you know, out of, of the pain versus, through it with the Lord, you know, I think a lot of people do a lot of, you know, trying to numb the situation and whatnot, um, just through busyness through, I mean, gosh, overcommitment to church and religion, but also, you know, like probably having a couple too many drinks here and there, you know, you do all kinds of things. You try to date, you try to do everything to make the pain stop, you know, Mm -hmm. um, And nothing works except, you know, coming to a different space. And I'll kind of talk about that here in a little bit. But the Lord kind of started walk. He placed a dream on my heart. Um, And I think that the Lord is kind of faithful to do that. Whenever something, you know, is, is taken away from you, something that, you know, is devastating like that. The Lord so often doesn't allow us, you know, to lose something without planning something new is kind of the saying without, you know, giving you something new. And he placed a dream on my heart and it was me and my sister-in-law, Kalina. We worked at the bakery together Mm -hmm. and, um, the, we were both getting these visions and words and dreams from the Lord Mm -hmm. and they were the same. Like, oh my gosh. They were like, no way. No right. way. Yes, exactly. Like, Coming to the bakery in the morning, I'd be like, no, girl, for real. What? Yeah. You know, and I, you know, she's like, I was in the shower. I was like, I was over here. And what? Ah. You know, and so he, there was all this confirmation. And the Lord was just like opening up this giant vision of what this huge ministry would be that we would, you know, participate in. And I remember this is kind of a funny offshoot of the story, but I remember I had, you know, one of those words, visions and Kalina had as well. And I went to my therapist that day and he was this amazing, you know, Christian therapist. And he would sometimes, you know, have prophetic moments that would help with the healing. And so I'm sitting there and he says to me, now, why am I seeing you on a stage speaking to women? And I said, oh was so upset because I'd seen that this morning too. And he's like, it's like a white stage. And, and I stand up and I grab my purse and I say, what is going on? And I start crying and I run out the door because so often when we have been wounded and gone through trauma, um, which feels so small and maybe even without the wounds and trauma, maybe you just didn't grow. You grew up in an environment where learning to love yourself was not really a thing. Um, and mm. so, you know, it felt so small and insignificant and the weight of a giant 
vision like that coming toward me. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to receive it, but sorry, it's a little emotional. Um, It's reminding me of, of Mary, you know, she was told this huge assignment. She's like, wait, I'm just a girl and I'm not Mary, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I wanted that. to receive it with open arms, and I thought I had, but I didn't. Instead, I did what so many of us do. Um, I took it on as, oh, God wants me to go and do this. So now it's a mission. I'm, I'm responsible for making this happen. Yeah. And um, I spent years you know, in that feeling of responsibility to make it happen versus the receiving. See, I was unworthy. I was unworthy. So I had, I felt unworthy. So I had to keep my hands full of doing all these things for God. But in that, in that unworthiness, God was, you know, healing me and teaching me through various, you know, counseling and other ways that he was working with me through the years. And I began to hear his voice saying, if you let go of empty your hands of unworthy, and then you can receive the victory. You can receive what I have for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we're, our hands are so full of unworthiness and the doing, and I have to do it all, God. And, you know, we don't realize that his love as a father is there and he's already made a way. You know, he just wants us to receive all of that love and then start walking through the doors that he wants to open for you. He wants to do that with you. You know, he wants, if he's put a a dream and a, and a passion on your heart, you know, and given you a promise, he, he was the one who wants to walk it with you, you know, and you get, he doesn't need you to do it. He wants to do it with you because you're chosen and the beloved. And so, you know, it, it was a lot of learning about that, but, you know, I was telling you, you know, how I kind of got through that valley of, of the numbing and whatnot. It's learning to receive God's love, learning to become the beloved and learning just that receiving of, of him wanting to take care of you. I mean, it, it reminds me of the Israelites out in the desert, you know, and why wouldn't I ask this question early on and why didn't the Israelites go in? Why wouldn't they go in Lord? And it's been a whole journey of learning. Um, I'm actually writing a series of three books about, about this basically, but um, it's, it's, so much about learning to be able to receive his love for you. And, and in that receiving of it, I'm worthy of it. So I can walk in, see, they didn't go in because they thought they were grasshoppers, you know, and oftentimes we don't go into what the Lord has for us because we think we're grasshoppers. We don't receive it, you know, for that reason, we think we're so small and insignificant, but we're not to him. You know, he, he pulled them out of Egypt because they were his beloved, you know, And 40 40 years is a long time. Yeah, it is. It is. And it it was a long time of learning. Right. You know, learning who they are, learning Mm -hmm. identity. And so, yeah, that's kind of kind of where I've been in that journey and now walking into those doors, you know, ready to walk into the promised land, not not holding back anymore. Right. Not running, not walking around in circles. But um, so where did that lead you to where you are today? Like Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing right now, your ministry, because I want to learn more. <laughs> well, absolutely. So um, I guess it was, a li- you know, like I said, my sister-in-law and I had tried to get it going and right. we just kept hitting a wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall and becoming really frustrated to the point at which we both quit at the same time it was COVID it was our church closed um but it didn't ever it didn't open its doors back it was supposed to and then our pastor walked away so we were devastated we lost that giant family Um, yeah that's so hard that's so hard and then was your church in that area to where you see people that you were at church with that were part of your congregation you see them out and you're like hi yeah, well, yeah, and you, you know, it was funny because the congregation was also hurt by it. A lot yeah. of people didn't even go back to church, at least not for a long time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of weird how we didn't all keep together, even though we sort yeah. of tried in the beginning. Yeah, we it all kind of faded, which then you feel like a little bit of, you know, rejection, like, well, why don't they love me anymore? You know, it was just a real yeah. hard time. Yeah. And so, you know, we kind of just said, you know, I'm not, 
we just weren't messing with the ministry or anything at that point. We were needing to heal and the right. Lord was needing to take us on a journey. And so we, um, the Lord and I just kind of, after that sat for a bit, you know, I told you I'd been in church since before I was even born. Well, um, I, I felt like I had to, or I wasn't good if that makes sense. And that was something that God had to do was sort of an undoing for me. Um, and I sat for two and a half years and the Lord kept saying no to me about going to church. No, no, no. You know, and he was undoing some of that, that religion that I had taken on and right. I have to do all these things for God And in letting go of all the, I have to do's is, you know, be, when the hands became more open and right. so, um, then the Lord, I, I saw an ad for church and the, it was on Facebook and I wasn't looking for one, but it said, we need a startup team. And the Lord said, go, go build this church. Aww. So I went obediently. Yeah. It's a little like startup church. They needed a startup group. And long and short of the story is, um, God started opening doors. Um, I had, you know, desired to be a worship leader when I was a little girl, but I didn't have mm -hmm. that experience. I was terrified. Um, and the Lord opened that door. I am now leading worship on a stage. Okay. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Terrified person, but yeah. Aww, that's such a <laughs> blessing and a gift that you can sing. <laughs> yeah, apparently I can, which I also <laughs> didn't know, you know, until the Lord just did a work, you know, and where yeah. he had stage fright. Now I have, you know, this, this place of peace with him. Um, yeah. and also, you know, I've also joined the board of the church and I'm just helping build it all together. Yeah. Um, so God is doing that, which is, is really fun. You know, um, he's opened that door and just, you know, as the beloved, like, here's your, you know, here's what you were longing for because he yeah. put the desires in our hearts. So clearly he wants all right all them right and then um there is a network called daily gospel network mm -hmm. and i suppose that we maybe had filled out something during those years we were trying to build the ministry on our own you know um and i received um a, a few emails and text messages from the network asking if I would like to come and take a course about starting your own talk show. And the minute I saw it, I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because I do want to do this. You know, it was like God was opening the door and inviting me. Well, he certainly invited me because the owner of this network, his name is George Sanders. He not only taught this course, but he personally is like there for me. will answer the phone if I have questions, that kind of thing. And so we literally set it up from like what camera, what microphone, what, you know, the whole thing. And he walked me through. And mm -hmm. that was a place where I wouldn't probably have gone forward because I thought it required something huge of me, big equipment, expensive yeah. things, you know, um, and, and he simplified it and made it, you know, made it simple to where I could walk through that door. So I started RE Vive Studios and we interview artisans of all kinds and it is to inspire others into all God called and created them to be. And so it's like a three-part series where, or a three-part episode where in the beginning people tell their inspiration story mm -hmm. and then they provide a tutorial, which others can find on places like Pinterest and whatnot, that maybe they're not looking for the Lord, but they're looking for painting, you know, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. And then finally, the third piece is the, you would not believe God story. So people will yeah. tell me a miracle story and it's very hard to kind of, you know, argue someone's testimony because that is their real life and, and what something God did for them. Right. And so it's a beautiful way for people to come in who maybe aren't looking for God, but find him there. And so that's kind of the start of where that I'm is so now. neat. <laughs> you know, like as far as like you're talking about artisans and creators, like some people say, well, I'm not artist artistic and I'm like yes you are everyone's gift is different and God is the ultimate poet mathematician scientist author I mean amazing how biblically how everything fits together and ties together but I mean he wants you to get ideas from him and then implement and create with him you know he he rested on the seventh day at everything and he was like this is good so you do get like joy when you create with him, um, but everyone is creative in their own way. It's like the, it's the shiny light chasing the shiny light or um, 
you know, I love Pinterest, but like comparing yourselves to others on social media, like we were created to create in our own way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And people receive differently from different individuals and different, you know, different things spark them. So, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, don't stop yourself and say, well, other people are doing something like this. Yes. But you might be the one voice that they can. Right. That's right. And you never know when you're going to plant a seed and how neat that you do them in a three-part series. I've never heard of that. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it it was the way that the Lord kind of shared it to me, you know, when, whenever we saw the original vision. And so, yeah, it's just been a blessing to, you know, to now, instead of like trying to go make stuff happen and strive on my own, it's like receiving God's love. You know, I'm not, he doesn't need me to go do something for him. He, he needs me to receive what he wants to do on the earth, you know, and, and participate with him. So it's been, you know, a beautiful thing to have those doors open and to do it in a restful state, you know. Yes. And how <laughs> neat that you you do get fueled um by meeting other people, other believers and then um or non-believers and then you um get to hear their stories and you're invigorated by that and refueled by that too. So oh, how yes. can how can people find you? Okay. Well well we're on the Daily Gospel Network and we're on Legend L E G I N D plus Studios. That's a new network we just joined. Okay. Um, and both of those are inspirational networks. And then of course you can find us at revivestudios.com. So I'm sure you can put that in your in your yeah, uh, description I'm or whatever. Description. <laughs> and then are you on social media also? We are as well. And it's all under R Revive Studios. Okay, that makes it even easier. And what platforms are you on? You're on um, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, Pinterest, TikTok. I mean, basically all the things. I know. I'm on <laughs> all the podcasts, things. Podcast, our podcast, and our YouTube as well. So our YouTube is, you know, where you can easily find the shows. Yeah, isn't that nuts? There's so many different, but um, for those that are creators, when you have the content, just changing that up to fit each one of those things is easy. And once you get the hang of it, it's not... You know, so you're not recreating content for each thing. So, um, oh. <laughs> because I just sounded overwhelming when we both said that. <laughs> so, and are you currently looking for people to interview or? I would love that. If you are an artisan and you would like to join our show, we would love to have you. Love to hear your incredible miracle stories and just share what you're doing, what God's doing in your life. Cause it's so, so important that we, we share what God's doing in others lives. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to build the kingdom. It is. And, and we're meant to encourage each other and encourage one another and not keep our stories to ourselves. So I like to end on this question. Um, if you looked back at your testimony and where you are today, um, you can understand God's plan and purpose in it, but, um, I, I'm sure you didn't enjoy the journey when it was happening, but can you see um, the reasoning behind everything? Oh, yes. You know, he he placed on my heart um, that I would write the books about going from victim to victory. Well, that was literally me. I had been victimized and I had felt like a victim, very small and crushed. Mm-hmm. But the Lord showed me a picture of victory and what what I looked like, you know, who, who I was. And he took me from victim to victory. And yet if I hadn't walked through those hard times along the way, I wouldn't have had that built inside of me, the pieces that I needed, you know, to now be able to share and love others and, you know, without judgment, without criticism, you know, just, just an open heart. And I'm grateful, you know, there's a song grateful for the scars, you know, um, and I am. Oh my gosh. It's like, you have a song and a word and a name. (laughs) (laughs) It's true because you are, you know, I think every human struggles with judgment, you know, and judging others. And then also we do struggle with being, you know, with judgment, but, um, as you go through your journeys, all that falls off and you're just more of a real person and you can relate and empathize and truly love people for where they are. And even if others would say, well, they're not a good person or they're not a nice person. How can you show them love? I don't, sometimes, I don't know. It just comes from somewhere, not me. Right. Exactly. Um, And we're anointed in the place of that pain that we've been through. 
And so now we have a heart for those people that where we wouldn't even have maybe noticed them or looked in their direction previously. Right. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. What happened? I don't know. Oh, where are you? You're still there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can I can't edit that in. <laughs> I'm so glad you laughed. I'm like, yes, she's still there. It, there was a pop. I'm gonna edit this out, but there was a pop up button, so I had to. Oh, edit. okay, no worries. <laughs> Thank you. Have ten minutes left. I'm like, I know that. Okay. I know have ten minutes. Um, <laughs> But um, I am in some groups with different creators and they have beautiful stories and I know I'm inspired by them. So um, I would love to connect you Please. guys. Yes, absolutely. Look and I can that. see that some of these creators, um, they don't understand the significance of what they're doing, but I can see, you know, and, it, and it's hard for women. It's just hard to have that confidence, but not overconfidence. It's kind of a balance for women. Um, <laughs> yes. yeah, to, keep, it, to keep keep that pure heart yeah it, yeah it is it is important <laughs> but more often I see with creators that are in the you know the Christian faith-based type creating um you know they could definitely use building up and knowing that what they're doing is making a difference so um yeah absolutely yeah and that their voice matters because yeah. it matters to the Lord yeah, I know that like with Brad and I, when we get like a comment or an email just saying, thank you so much for what you do, we're like, Aww. thank you. And we write back, thank you so much for the encouragement. We really needed it today. Right? So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. well, thank it's... you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, it was wonderful to meet you. <laughs> and I look forward to um, introducing you to other people and then keeping in touch and kind of following you. And now I know where to find you in all the places. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. And I can't wait to share your story. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed hearing that testimony. Remember, if you would like to share yours, just reach out to us. We know that um, we are called to go and seek the one out of the 99 that is lost. That is mentioned in Matthew and in Luke. So go and seek the one that is lost. And thank you for joining us today.